Thanks. Thanks, uh, Melissa. And uh, without Melissa, there would be no show today. So please actually, uh, yeah, thank Melissa. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, greetings and warm welcome once again. Uh, uh, it's really exciting to, to have you all here in the room and online around the world. Uh, this is one of the most exciting days for, for KPSRL in the year. And uh, even more exciting is make the, the conversation we are going to have. So this conference traditionally started with keynote speech. And we had a lot of reflections on, oh, how we should do it. And is the speech reinforcing the hierarchy of knowledge? Is it in line with what we are really wanting to, how we are wanting to contribute to the sector? And then, uh, but still, it is important to set the tone. It is important to set the tone of how they should unfold. And, uh, but we want to set the tone that is about the frank conversations, critical reflections, and engagement. So we set it as a conversation. And, uh, then we started reaching out to community to see who could engage in the conversation, what would be interesting perspectives, who are exciting people, who are inspiring people in the community. And that led us uh, to three incredible pe uh, persons who I'm really, really excited to welcome today on the stage. Um, and they have very distinct experiences and perspectives and, and geographical and thematic uh, engagements. But at the same time, there is some common thread that, that connects them. And uh, I'll be also witness and, uh, and experience some uh, engagement in that thread. Uh, I would maybe emphasize the, the fact that they were all in one way or another contributing to peace, uh, that they've been all in various ways creatively reimagining, reimagining approaches, reimagining structures, reimagining uh, uh, concepts, reimagining uh, how we think and do peace. Uh, and uh, who we involve in these processes. And I will introduce them and invite to the stage in order uh, of, of how we got to engage them. So first, uh, yeah, the welcome together with me, Vera Almava. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, Thank you so Vera. much. Thank you. Yeah. Greatly appreciate it. Nice to be here. Yeah, so, so Vera, maybe just to, for, for the beginning, could you yep. just uh, shortly tell us who you are, what you do? Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm very honored to be here among you. Thank you so much for making this happen. My name is Vera Maula, president and co-founder of Peace of Art organization based in Lebanon. Um, Peace of Art was founded in 2016 by Mr. Mahdi Yahya um, in a very deprived and very neglected area called North of Bika. Um The idea is, was to create a safe space, an open space for everyone to come together, start dialogue, um, start meeting each other in a very uh, difficult and uh, this, this divided area um, with the idea of bridging these communities together, um, regardless of the background, religious, uh, nationalities, backgrounds um, re related to beliefs and areas pe youth are coming from. Um, so we are an arts-based organization and um, the idea was to use arts as a tool for bringing youth together into this um, open and neutral space. So i um, very happy to be here, very excited um, to be part of this discussion and conversation and looking forward also to hear from our colleagues as well um, during this day. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Thanks Thank for you. coming all over. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so that just to, to a bit strengthen that connection with the team, because that is what, what we are to unpack today. Uh, would you add something uh, on like that connection, that relationship to the team? Um, well, part of it is also um, usually starting to listen to the voices that are on the ground. I think this is very important, listening to the different voices that are coming from different uh, regions, especially um, from the youth who are usually not able to reach platforms uh, universally. So uh, reimagining social contract, as my colleagues just said, um, it's very important to start from that ground, from the ground level, and kind of uh, help, help it find its way to, um, to the higher levels mm. and um, start changing the conversation based on what the uh, local identities um, um, shape it mm. and how, it, how they shape it. Um, so I think this is part of 
this, um, the interesting thing about this conference itself is it's, it's starting to bring such voices um, to, the, to the light. And um, I think this is how reimagining social contracts should be looking like, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Great. Th thanks, Vera. I think interesting in the raising the trust, but I would say not trust only. It's a more complex than uh, young people institutions, intergenerational. I believe uh, in, in a lot of uh, issues related to trust between different communities mm -hmm. across the border or even within the same same region, Divide, but yeah. but divided, or or trust in the sense of identities you were referring to, to uh, so just just to kind of take a step back and, and see uh, this trust and complexity of trust and layers of trust so true so true yeah. um, well also uh, to think about it also from the uh, grounds level also in many cases youth um, for example if we're talking about north of Bekaa, uh in Lebanon the idea is that youth have ideas have potential but at the same time they don't have access to skills and the tools um, so part of it is also providing resilience on that, on that sense, um, giving them leadership, giving them agency, uh, providing the platforms and tools, um, because it's also part of this limitations that is um, building this kind of um, lack of, of engagement among the, among the youth and with the um, you know, policies that, uh, and policy making um, levels, let's say. Mm -hmm. So um, trying to reimagine that is also, I think, very important. And working on that level is very important. Um, one other point is also the ability to express. Exp well, this also connects to the same point. But uh, expression, means of expression is also sometimes very limiting for the youth. And um, in many cases, I think in our case, we're trying to use the art uh, approach and the um, well, filmmaking, documentations, theater, um, music, um, as a way to help youth start voicing themselves in in an um, environment that does not provide them with this um, um, with this tool, mm. with this ability, let's say. So um, this is how how marginalization starts, I think, mm. when tools are not provided, when the dynamics are really um, closed and bordered and framed in such a way that um, youth cannot be uh, really actively engaging in the, in the systems and in the institutions and um, on the ground levels as well. Mm. So um, this really also connects to the communications among the um, youth from, from the same community uh, too. So yeah. I wanted to add. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's, it's really that adds, adds the different elements, yeah. so not just opening spaces and giving opportunity, but then how we support people sure. to, to meaningfully engage, Absolutely. Uh, and how then we use different approaches, different techniques in, in, in order yes. to enable them to, to engage uh, in line with their, their, their passions, capacities, exactly. uh, interests. So true, yeah. so true. Yeah. And um, right. yeah, this also helps in project this voice even on a larger level. Yeah, and I'm also so really pleased that you're emphasizing the agency and, um, and leadership and, and then that individuals need to have in True. order to, to really then meaningfully yeah. engage and that, yeah, in full support. Which is both on personal, I think, and collective levels. Uh, indeed, indeed. So. Mm. <laughs> Great. We will also have uh, several sessions uh, th throughout the day that will particularly dive into the role of social protests and uh, the role of activists and the types of engagement in different, uh, in different parts of the world, but also particularly focusing on the, the northern western world because we, we often think uh, of uh, that issues to be solved or problems to be addressed are elsewhere and that, that the importance of having that critical reflection also our context and where we are embedded. And, and a bit in line with that, but also connected to some of the points you already raised, is uh, uh, you started uh, mentioning like what is important to provide, like a safe space, uh, like opportunities for engagement, but also given this positionality that we are sitting in the Netherlands, uh, in the donor country, and the many, many of uh, in, in the room are engaged in processes elsewhere. 
There's also one of the uh, questions from the audience, how can external actors engaging in processes of society and community support? What are the meaningful ways of support that external actors coming to the context with all the good intentions, but sometimes not very well aware of the specificities of the context or the different dynamics? So what are your reflections on the meaningful ways of support? Well, one part of it, apologies if I'm, <laughs> thank you. Uh, one part of it is um, um, focusing on the local identities in every context, um, especially in the global south. Um, local identities have, um, uh, have their own um, values, their own um, characteristics, their own traits. So this should be basically part of any programming um, preserving these traditions, pre preserving these images, preserving the, the local identities of the youth, of the, of the individuals in general, of the communities. Um, taking that into consideration with every programming is truly essential because with, um, with um, let's say, external uh, programming, sometimes this is not taken into consideration and this is, um, in many cases, um, challenging the local identities, mm. challenging the ability of youth to express themselves in the way they, uh, they actually are and in, the, in the dynamics of the society itself. Um, so focusing on this preservation is really important. Mm. Uh, that's just yeah. part of it. Yeah. I don't want not to take Thanks. the whole <laughs> conversation. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, I think this also to some extent relates because uh, you touched upon specificities. And there was also another question about uh, how, to what extent it's uh, the, the way authorities uh, see young people and, uh, and when they take people and for in which topics they take young people seriously. To what extent that is it like a cultural thing? That, so I think it also relates to, uh, to what you were saying. In different regions, different cultures, they have different dynamics. Uh, yeah, so I just thought it, it relates to one, one of the questions, so if you would uh, add something to it, or I think it was already. Um, well, this is, I think, part of the issue because um, youth, for example, in the context of Lebanon, are not as engaged, and especially I'm talking about the more deprived zones, um, are not as engaged as they should be with the, with the government, and the government is not taking usually the... Um, the uh, required, let's say, um, effort for that. So this sh definitely should be part of the um, programming, maybe pressuring more towards more engagement of the youth on the, on the local levels. Let's start with that and then um, building on that to, um, to reach more policy and decision-making levels. Um, I think this, is, this has become um, a responsibility of the civic society in, in such, uh, in many uh, cases, because of this maybe um, imbalanced uh, situation. Um, so I think, yeah, uh, mm. this, this is very crucial, trying to also push towards more, more engagement of youth, as Mr. Graham has just said, um, and uh, yeah. especially in such uh, context. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, and uh, when we st uh, speak about culture, it's also a lot about language. True. And uh, linking back, and there is one of the questions coming from the audience, uh, linking back to the, the thematic headline. I mean, social contracts is a term that we've been trying to unpack this whole year and in very different ways, and yet uh, we'll also have a session on Madania and, and how then if we try to translate them in different languages, it's, it's, it starts becoming more difficult. And then not only to translate it into language, but also the use of the term and the meanings around it. So since we are having a quite strong focus on like young people and how do we engage them, uh, do you, uh, is, is in your experience this term close to them, <laughs> clear? What are other ways to, to actually talk about and engage people into reimagining social contracts by perhaps maybe avoiding or using different terms, different approaches, different concepts. Yeah. So what, what would be the ways uh, you think uh, to translate in a way this uh, concept? 
It's, uh, th there's also the, the, a comment uh, building on, on or reflecting, I would say, on the, the social controversies community and, and, and community dynamics and community relations. And, uh, and your call, Graham, to, to, to think beyond like institutional structures, but to understand societal dynamic. But yet, uh, there are still aspects that are, and here one, one brought like taxation, paying taxes, part of like obligations and how we are part of society and our roles and responsibilities. And, but yet, here what, 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 what I'm hearing is like the emphasis on actually the social dynamics, the, the, the relationship. So how those then are get brought together or, or, or brought into peace? Um, well, uh, just to, to also highlight part of, uh, I, I hope this answers this specifically. I wrote really what, what brought me to attention from the program itself, also like the example of the Minasa platform, um, which is really highlighting also these types of dynamics from the, from the ground. It's really interesting to hear that this is part of this programming, for example. Same with the UNY, same with PACS, same for the KPSR. Um, trying to also create this type, type of uh, uh, access and accessibility and reach. Um, I think this brings this type of uh, uh, connection and the linkage between the two. Um, it's, it's really um, important to um, include that in our programming in a way that um, allows these voices to be heard. And also to add on the previous point uh, concerning the language specifically, I think the, re the use of art is uh, uh, sorry for also bringing up uh, back right, that point. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, the use of art is also part of this, um, giving away a tool, a language that's accessible to everyone, that's un understandable by everyone. So through a short film, you can um, create visuals that are really reaching everyone. Everyone can understand it. Music, same, same with the music, same with the photography. And uh, just to bring that up, we have a photograph photography exhibition outside for those who would be interested to also see, to understand also the context of Lebanon and the dynamics, uh, which is in the um, main hall. Okay. So just to invite everyone to, to see that. Yeah, uh, thanks, and thanks for bringing the, the, those photos across. And then just to, to mention into that, uh, there are actually two different exhibitions. One, one was brought by, by Vera, a set of uh, photos, and another by, uh, uh, group of not one more on the protests in, in Britain. Uh, so to see also from different contexts, photography and, and uh, creative uh, captures of moments of, uh, of struggles. Uh, being mindful of time, uh, towards wrapping up this, this exciting reservation, it feels we could go on and on, but then just uh, thinking uh, of then what are, what can we draw out as, as maybe uh, puzzling questions to pose for the rest of the day, or some implications for our future work. So more participatory approach and listening, more listening mm. to the ground, uh, just to be mindful of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, you. <laughs> Sorry. thank you. Any any final thoughts, uh, more Vera? Um, well. Yeah. Uh, just thank you for making our voices heard. <laughs> this is uh, in itself um, a really important indicator as well of how um, voices can really reach <laughs> places. So thank you for that. And um, I think, yeah, the most important part of it is making voices really heard. Um, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Very grateful for, for being with all three of you today here, very much inspired. I hope this was also inspiring for, for the audience and that it will the, provide some food for thought and for further engagement in the exciting sessions that are coming up. Thank you for, for being with us in this opening. Have an exciting day. Enjoy. Thank you.